Hey everyone, welcome back to Crafting the Life I Want. My name is Sean, and today we are going to be installing the forward reverse switch on my KBAC 27D. One of the advantages of having a forward and reverse switch is that it allows me to have the belt going in the opposite direction, which means when I'm doing final sharpening on a knife or a blade that I've made, I'm able to do that on the top portion of the belt with the sharp side pointing away from me, so that if something snags or something like that, it doesn't send a sharp knife straight at me, it sends it at the wall instead. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. This is 220 volt, and the last thing I want is to get shocked. So the first step to any electrical project is to unplug what you're working on. So the first thing I did was pop the rubber plug out of the front. That's going to be the location of the forward reverse switch. Your switch should have a groove on one side. That goes down on your uh, VFD. There's a little notch in the hole. Slide that through, and take the metal nut and screw that on. All right, so the next step is going to be wiring it. You'll have three wires coming off your switch. If you bought your switch from uh, KBAC like I did, your wires are red striped, green striped, and yellow striped. Your green stripe is your common. Um, your red stripe is forward and your yellow stripe is reverse. Um, once you're inside, the top left corner of your VFD is where you're going to find those pins. There's currently a jumper tying common and forward together. Go ahead and remove that jumper. Pretty tight fit. Really tight fit. Once the jumper is removed, you can go ahead and install your new plugs in their appropriate locations. You'll see on those pins that we just removed the jumper from that one says reverse, one says common, and one says forward. Just make sure as you're running these wires that you're not crossing any other wires in a way that's not manageable. I'm actually going to end up cutting this uh, zip tie and then redoing it so that I can get a little more space in there. All right, so now it's as simple as plugging in the wires where they belong. Uh, the red striped one goes in the forward section, the green striped one goes into the common plug, and then the yellow striped one goes into the reverse plug. Um, I'm using colors and stripes that align with my switch. If you wired your own, then your top wire goes into forward, your middle wire goes into common, and your bottom wire goes into reverse. So now I'm going to plug it back in. We'll close this just um, lightly, plug it back in, and then I will test the motor and make sure the switch is working correctly. This is the main power. I'll flip that on. The switch we just installed, I'm going to put that in forward. And then I'm going to hit start. Turn this down. All right, so at this point, it's functioning, but it's going the wrong direction. So this is reverse for my motor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try the other switch orientation, and we'll see if it switches the direction. So I will stop, put my switch in reverse, which is two notches down, and then start. And so that's going in forward for, for my motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to swap my forward and reverse pins, and that should swap the direction of the motor for that orientation of the switch. 
Because these are really tight in here, I'm actually gonna switch the wires on the switch itself because I have a lot more space to work over here. So I'm pulling off the red striped and the yellow striped, which are my top and bottom plugs, and then plugging them in the pins that they just, that their partners just came out of. So yellow striped is going up top and red striped is going down below. Those are all set. So now let's do another test to make sure everything's working right. Again, main power on. Uh, I'm gonna put the switch in forward and then hit start. Great, so that's running in the correct direction. So I'm gonna go stop, put the switch in reverse, and hit start again. And great, switch direction and that is reverse from my grinder. So now we know that the switch is installed correctly. Um, so I'm gonna turn the power off. I'm gonna go unplug it, open it back up and I'll manage the wires and make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. So my switch came with two of these small zip ties. Um, obviously everybody kind of has zip ties lying around. It just helps manage your wires. I'm gonna replace the one that I cut off, but uh, adding the new wires to it. And then the rest of these wires, I wanna make sure they have room to move on either side. So I'm just going to tie it in the middle with some extra on both sides so that if, if there's any tension on it, they have a little space to stretch. That done. Cut off your extras. Obviously, try don't cut your wires with this. A pair of wire cutters would work better. So that's it in here. All of our wires are managed. I'm just gonna close this up, um, put the screws back in, and then we'll put the waterproof covering on the uh, switch on the outside. So it'll look like the rest of these and it'll keep all of the dust and, and whatnot from your grinder out. It's easier to put these on when the switch is in the middle orientation. So I just flip that, flip that back to stop. And then this is just rubber cover for this and it just screws on. Oh, I'm an idiot. All right, taking that back off. I should have tested that beforehand. All right, so what happened was, this is actually what holds the switch on. The nut that came with the switch itself is not needed. Um, I took it off and used it to attach the switch initially. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that back off and reattach the switch with the provided um, rubber grommet that seals it from the environment. I'm probably gonna have to open it up um, and do that from the inside. So this is the part you don't need. Back together we go. 
All right, so I finished installing the rubber grommet that holds the switch in place. That just keeps all of the environment out. That's one of the best parts about the K-Back series. They're more expensive, but they're entirely sealed from the environment, so they're particularly suited for a grinder. Uh, the next step is to verify that the belt tracks in both forward and reverse. I'm gonna grab a belt. And just to show you what I'm looking for, I'm gonna put it in forward first. So when I adjust the tracking, these front wheels are two inches wide, which is the same width as the belt. We want the belt to be traveling centered on those wheels and then roughly centered on both the tracking wheel here as well as the drive wheel down there. So because nothing has changed, everything still looks good going forward. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it and then put it in reverse and we'll see how that looks. All right, so first thing I'm noticing is that it doesn't immediately track perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the tracking mechanism and see if we can bring it in alignment. All right, so what I'm noticing is that I'm traveling all the way on the left side of the tracking wheel and almost as far on the drive wheel and I'm still not quite over as far as I wanna be on the idler wheels. You'll see I still have that bevel, which is usually covered when the belt is in the right position. Now this is about 3 16 of an inch. And to be honest, as far as my, my need is concerned, when I'm sharpening, I'm sharpening up here on the slack belt portion. And so this doesn't bother me. I can do what I need to up here without doing any additional adjustments. Um, I am curious, I haven't had to adjust this at all before, and I'm, I'm not sure, I have some ideas of what could be done, but if you wanted to, uh, to let me know in the comments what needs to be adjusted to kind of figure that out, I would certainly appreciate it. Let me go ahead and stop this. So uh, that's a wrap on this project. I really am excited to have this new functionality with my grinder. It will make it a lot easier for me to sharpen knives and feel safe while doing it. Thank you everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support we get from our viewers. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel in another way, we do have Patreon as well as Buy Me A Coffee. Or if you like this shirt or any others, you can check that out on the Teespring link in the description below. Obviously, none of this would be possible without the support of you all. So thank you for watching, and we hope you'll join us on any future videos. And Molly says I do. Right? <laughs>